What's up, family? Thanks so much for tuning into my channel once again. This week, I'm bringing you a very visual and snappy, cool looking color change entitled Fabien's Change. This originated from a friend of mine named Fabien de Faucher, who's from France, and he's a very experienced and expert card flourisher. He also dabbles in magic, and while playing around with card flourishes, I guess he discovered this little move. And so here's a performance of Fabien's version, how he performs it. So check this out quickly. So that was Fabien's version of the change. I've adapted it differently. I have a different handling for it, two or three actually. And I'm glad to finally be able to share it with you guys. So before I get into teaching, I want to get on a little bit of a rant on YouTube and exposure and magic. I'm not going to go too much into my thoughts on this, but I do want to say that creators of the moves essentially have the right to do whatever the heck they want to do with it. However, it is important that things are taken seriously, as in the practice and the time put in, uh, the efforts, the research into where it goes, so the crediting, the acknowledgements, these type of things. I do think that all these things are very important. It's also equally as important to teach it well, because if I teach you something and you go ahead and do it and I'm teaching it wrong, I'm essentially, you're essentially walking on a broken foot and it's just gonna get progressively worse from there. So it's good to learn the fundamentals from the start so you don't have to go and relearn everything else afterwards. And as well, we're spreading good magic. And YouTube is the number one learning platform in the world. So it's hard for me to ignore that. It's hard for me to look at YouTube and say, that's not a valid platform for teaching magic. I don't think that's correct. I think if I wanted to learn how to change a tire, I can go on YouTube. However, I'm not gonna watch a video about magic and then see a tire changing video in the thumbnails. I don't think that's how YouTube works. So I think to learn something, you have to look for it. And you have to know what you're looking for because there are millions, if not hundreds of millions, if not more than that, videos on YouTube. So stumbling across you know, a double lift tutorial or this tutorial, for instance, uh, can be quite rare if you're looking for something else. And if you're not generally interested in magic, you're not gonna wanna know how it works. You don't, you're not gonna even care how it works. And even if you do see how it works, it doesn't change anything because all it is is a tool. Slights, moves, tricks, they're tools and it's up to you to find out how you're gonna use these tools. So it's not about what you're doing, but what you're leaving the spectator with. And so ultimately, these are all tools that you can learn. Once you learn them, I'm not gonna teach you how to perform them. That's something you're gonna to have to find out for yourself uh, through you know, your own journey in magic. So that's my rant. I just wanted to touch base a little bit on how I feel about the whole YouTube thing. Although this is not a channel that's gonna be devoted to, to teaching magic, every now and then if I have an original slight move or a friend that has something they wanna share, this is a perfect platform for it and I think you guys are generally interested in what we have to say on these platforms. And so you give positive feedback and hopefully you apply this, uh, this knowledge to the best of your capability and give it some real world practice and if not, that's fine too, as long as you don't go out and blatantly expose magic for the sake of gaining followers or gaining views. So there has to be some type of message, there has to be some type of positive mind state behind all that. I mean, that's all I can say about it. This is a relatively new platform for me, and I expect that I'm gonna use it to the best of my ability, to the best of my capability, and hopefully, inherently through the magic and the flourishing and, and, and the psychology or philosophy that I'm going to share with you guys, hopefully that'll make some of you better and not worse. And if it starts to make people worse, maybe it's time for me to shut the channel down. So that's all I have to say. Let's get into the tutorial. Once again, this is Fabien's Change, Fabien de Faucher. If you want to check him out, he is such a great friend and a great artist. Check this out, don't move. This is something he drew, look at this. So that's the uh, accredited, accredited display from Tobias Levin. He drew that and sent that to me. So he's such an awesome dude. If you want to check him out, his artwork, his his photography, his flourishes, it's uh, Fabien de Faucher on Instagram. 
So check that out. I'll leave the link below where you guys can click and go see what he does. So thanks again, Fabien, and let's get into it. All right, so before I begin, I'm gonna be using the Exquisite Bold playing cards by Expert Playing Card Company. I don't think that these are available anymore, but just FYI. So this change, although Fabien showed this to me, I do believe that much of this can be attributed to Erdenes as he has a similar change using uh, using the thumb, uh, where he goes back here and sort of, and that can be found in the expert at the card table. He's got a lot of actually different variations using the thumb um, as a color change. So here's what the change looks like. That's basically what it looks like. As you see, it's very, very quick, it happens very fast. Now there's a few things going on. So essentially, you're bringing the card down. This is as simple as this. You're bringing the card down here, and as you go to strike, you're putting this on top of the deck and the bottom card is being pushed out with a thumb. So all you're doing with the thumb here is you're pushing it out like that, right? So the pad of your thumb, holding it in dealer's grip here, the pad of your thumb is just doing that, just sliding it out to the side. Now there are a few things that make this slight very deceptive and one of them is actually conditioning the eye. And so I do this first. So I'm gonna do this thing here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it by this corner. So this is not the pip corner if you're right-handed. It's over here with your uh, index and middle and the thumb in the back. And you can have this little sort of guillotine chopping motion. So your thumb back there and your index is just kind of moving this forward. And as this goes to chop down, it comes down here and basically strikes right through. So like that in slow motion. It's kind of hard to do slow because this is something that happens fast. But basically, you want to condition the eye to this movement here. So as I go through here, and then I come back, I lift, and then as I come here, I reach right through as if it's one motion. Okay? Another use for this change, and the reason I do this is because the eye gets used to this movement. I don't want to do this, pick up the card, and straight go into it. Although that looks all right, I think that a little bit of added deception, little layer of deception extra could go a long way. I like to start off like this. So that's a cool little pop out move. All you're doing is you have a card face up here and your thumb goes on top and you're going to slide it over to the side, get it ready. And whenever you're ready, your thumb is just gonna move it to the side here and it gives that little poppy, that poppy action. So out of nowhere, the card appears. You grab it by the bottom corner here strike it through and it goes right through again so there are multiple ways of changing this card uh, doing this change Fabien uh, in the video you've seen does almost like a paintbrush change where he goes here and as he comes by here it'll be that card it changes into which is quite cool do it again looks kind of cool there, there is a nice visual retention and I do like that uh, however I do think that the focus is very much here, and so they, they might be able to pick that up, whereas using it this way, uh, you're, as you're bringing it up here, the spectator's eye will follow the movement, so the large action covers a small action. As I come back down, boom, and that switches, and now I'm clean. Okay. Another way you might want to do it is just this quick change, this sort of guillotine change, as I call it, as you're here chopping down. You want to chop right into that position because that's the exact position that the other card's going to be in. Just like that. Now, there are times where you're going to do this and it's going to get caught right there. So you're going to want to overcome that and just like that. So it's a cool change. It can be done sort of on the offbeat. The one thing that I would not do is draw attention to the change because it is noisy. There are some noise issues. If you practice it, you can reduce the noise, but there's no real way of getting rid of it. So this is kind of like, almost done like a top change thing where they see the card, that's not your card. All right, well that's funny, because now it is. So almost like a visual top change. So instead of top changing where you, you say something like this and then you, you, know, you change the card, the best way to do it you're here, and oh, this wasn't your card? Oh, that's funny, because the way I look at it, I still see your card here. And it's just something that, that flies by. 
Um, and the only way to do that, of course, is to control the card to the bottom. So whatever control you like, let's say the two of spades, uh, you have that control to the bottom of the deck. And now this is your card, the two of clubs. Oh, I was close, right? It was a, it was a two of spades. Oh, okay, there it is. And so it turns into this nice little offbeat moment. Aside from that, I think academically, this is really fun to do. It's fun to do in front of the camera. It's fun to do in front of the mirror. So there's nothing wrong with that. As for color changes that I use in my regular repertoire, this might not be one of them because I think this is just academically speaking, it's fun to do for the camera. It's fun to do for your friends, uh, maybe your close friends, your magic friends, or like I said, maybe just an, just an offbeat thing. Uh, could be kind of cool. I've played around with some face down uh, switching. So where you have the card face down here and face up here or face down here rather, and you go to and you go to switch it. It just doesn't look clean. There's something weird about it. Use a top change in that case. To be honest, I think academically speaking, this is fine to do in front of the camera. There's nothing wrong with that. I think a lot of hobbyists and a lot of uh, the young guys out there love performing for the camera just to show off to your friends and on Instagram, which I'm super fine with. That's a platform for that type of sleight of hand that we enjoy. So it's almost like this flourishing sleight of hand that we enjoy. It's not practical, strong magic. What it is, it's just visual eye candy and there's nothing wrong with that. So I think that's one of the applications. So let me run through this one more time. Uh, you'll want to set up here. So you set up with the top card here. I like to do this little pointing thing. It's kind of magical where you just kind of point and the card appears. So all I'm doing here once again is sliding this card here, right? Point, grab the bottom, run it through, and all the way through again, and then you're clean. So that's it. All right guys, thanks so much once again for checking this video out. If you did like it, please like this video, comment below what you thought about it, and give it a share if you can. I will be back soon with some more videos, except this time I think we're going to go into some performance and show you some of the some of my favorite original routines, and hopefully I can share that with you guys. I have a few ideas. I'll actually give you a little bit of a glimpse. You see these? Uh, you see those post-it notes? See those are all video ideas. So I am working hard, and hopefully I'll be able to bring that to you soon. So thanks so much for checking in. Peace out.